Hello students. <coughs> now, uh, let me explain uh, the nuclear fission and how energy is released. Now, if you remember in one of my classes, I did say that, well, you have a nucleus of mass lambda. Okay, now let's not talk about the binding energy per nucleon, etc. Uh, this undergoes fission. This undergoes fission. So, to begin with, its initial energy, hmm? that is the energy of uh, this uh, nucleus is E1. What I mean is, E is equal to M1 C2. This is what I mean. Now, if you remember, during fission, this undergoes some sort of deformation. I suppose you remember I had drawn a diagram like this. And the energy of this deformed nucleus will be E2. Okay, will be E2. And I also said E2 is greater than E1. Well, in classical physics, energy cannot increase by itself unless you provide external energy or external forces does work on the system. Here, nothing like that. But we should understand that we are not talking classical physics, we are talking quantum physics. So in quantum physics, this can happen. So it will remain in this state for a very short duration of time. Okay, so for, for a very short duration of time, it will remain like this. And after this, after this stage, it will get split into two points. It will get split into two fragments. Uh, well, you can say the mass of this is M2 and the mass of this is M3. And the combined energy of these two will be, say, E3. Okay, or in other words, or in other words, you see here, M1, uh, M2, M2 C square plus M3 C square. Okay, is nothing but E3. Okay, and now E3 is less than E1. E3 is less than E1. Okay, so this is precisely what happens in a in a fission reaction. Okay, so I think it's very clear now that uh, from these equations, M1, M1 plus M2. M1 plus M2 is less than, sorry, M2 plus M3 is less than M1, is less than M1. So, uh, the energy that is released here, what is the energy that is released here? Energy that is released here will be M1 minus of M2 plus M3, okay, C squared. This is the energy, energy release. Okay, so uh, this is something that I had explained earlier that this happens and this happens, and this is how we have the, this is how it happens in quantum mechanics. It is permitted, it's not the classical physics. So that is the first thing that uh, we should note. Huh. Now let's come to the issue of uh, binding energy. Okay, that's where you know. The things that are very difficult for all of us. So, if you have to talk about the binding energy, bring the binding energy here in this uh, uh, region. So, the binding energy here, one will just go the window. The binding energy per nuclear. Now, what is this concept? Now, here uh, the mass m, that is the mass the mass m2 uh, plus m3 see, is less than mass m. Right? This is very clear for this aspect. Okay, so this is one issue. Now we are talking about the energy issue. Now here, here in this in this case, 
we will write equations for this m1, m2, m3 here yeah? in a manner in which we have to be writing it as well. So if you remember the basic equation was m1 itself we wrote it as z1 m2 plus m1 mn minus delta m1 I will write that minus delta m1 so this was the basic equation that we wrote okay and of course into c square you know it gives you the energy m1 now when we write m2 plus m3 okay so we are going to write it as z2 plus z3 mp plus n2 plus n3 mn now I am going to write here minus delta m2 minus delta m3 okay I suppose so this accounts for m2 this accounts for m3 so this is precisely what happens you know what happens uh, in these two reactions what happens in these two reactions now if you want to calculate the binding energy if you want to get the concept of binding energy here so you know this whole equation this whole equation right we need to multiply by c square and similarly this equation we have to multiply by c square right that is precisely what we do and in the process this z1 z2 and z1 z2 plus z3 is equal to z1 n2 plus n3 is equal to uh, n1 and if you subtract this from this these things will get cancelled and what remains is uh, these issues these things remain this. okay and uh, we have also seen that the binding energy is nothing but delta m into c this is the binding energy and binding energy per nucleon we wrote it as delta m into c square divided by v this is the this is how you know we wrote it as so therefore therefore the question here is very simple that these quantities these quantities that you see here are the only thing that is if you perform the uh, if you want to know what is the energy released then we are going to subtract this from this Okay, the energy released as I have already uh, uh, written here, you can see here, this is the energy released. Hmm? So we have to write equation for M1, M2, M3 and if you write the equations for M1, M2, M3, which is what I have written here, the Z terms and the N terms will get cancelled and what we will be left with uh, is basically these terms will remain. Okay, which are those terms? Minus delta M1 will remain and <coughs> minus of minus so minus of minus delta m2 okay minus of delta m2 only these two will do i'm sure students you are going to appreciate this okay and uh, all that we have to do is we need to multiply this by c square so multiply this by c square and then you know these delta m terms will get converted into the binding energies delta m comes will get converted into the binding energy terms i just have to write this Converted. So therefore, here you see this is going to be minus the binding energy of the uh, parent nuclei, and uh, this is going to be plus the binding energy of the daughter nuclei. Hmm? See, go with the steps. Go with the steps. What we can see is m1, m2, and we have the two equations. Okay, and uh, this is precisely what we get binding energy is equal to and as you know the binding energy 
binding energy per nucleon in P. So all that we have to do is uh, we have to divide this by their respective mass number and multiply it by mass number. We are going to get this. Okay. So if we do that, if we do that here, we are going to end up with V1 upon A1 into A1 hmm? and plus V2 upon V2 into V2 plus V3 upon V3 into V2. It's a Okay. So we have to just uh, do this manipulation here in this one. So we are going to write here is minus B1N or uh, we use a symbol BN1, BN1 into A1 plus BN2 into B2 plus BN2 into B2. Okay. So this is precisely what we have And now, you know, the uh, experiments and uh, other theoretical ways by which, you know, the experiments could be validated or the theory validated by experiments, we have found these numbers, B and B and B and B. So in a particular example that we took, this B and 1 happens to be, happens to be 7.6. B n2 8.5 and B n3 8.5 and therefore we are getting a positive number as the energy that is released as the energy that is released okay well so this is how we see and the interpretation of these binding energies is that this binding energy is the energy uh, binding energy is the energy that is holding the nucleons together. This is one, one definition. Or if you want to split this nuclei into its constituent nucleons in its free state, then you need to provide uh, the uh, numerical value of the, 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 you need to provide external energy which is equal to the binding energy. That is another way to look at it. Okay. So therefore, now the concept of binding energy here, okay, if you see here, uh, it, it signifies here that the binding energy is more means the nucleons are held more tightly. That is the significance of this. The significance of binding energy per nucleon is simply to say that the nucleons, the nucleons are more tightly bound, and uh, the uh, and therefore. Hmm, the nucleus is more stable. That is the significance of the binding energy per nucleon. However, that number binding energy per nucleon, we can do the reverse engineering. That is, start from these equations, then get this equation, from this equation, get this equation, from this equation, get this equation, and from this equation, get this equation, and from this equation, get this equation. That is W. Similarly, you will get control energy. And then finally, in performance, you will get energy released. Is it clear? And this is the energy that is really released into the real world. Okay. So therefore, <coughs> from this, huh, from this reality, because the reality is we can measure this, we can measure this, we can measure this, we can manipulate it like this, and we can also measure this. And this is the truth. This is the truth. And how the, what is the theory for the truth? Yes, we have gone through step one, step two, step three, step four, and we have arrived at step. And now the data that is available to us, the theoretical data that is available to us is this data, this data, this data, this data, this data. And from this data, we can compute this. That's the whole exercise. Okay, friends, I think this much be very clear. So the significance of this we use to reverse engineer it and get facts. Okay. Well, thank you so much.